Hello everyone and welcome back to Camel Studios. Today in the first episode with the new vintage pack and uh, I'm so sorry about my voice first of all. It's quite early on and it's uh, been uh, suffering a bit from the weekend like I, um, I, I did my best to uh, recover my voice from a party weekend on Sunday which worked out beautifully. I had all the times like little bonbons and stuff like uh, you know to, to somehow save my voice which uh, worked out pretty well but um, now I'm, I'm slow paying the price for it <laughs> which which was uh, fully deserved to be honest anyhow um, we are here in a little episode which is um, somehow special so first of all um, thank you guys for all your answers uh, in the comments below in the last video where I was asking what we should do and where we should put the vintage area and let me just explain a few things today's commentary will be quite short because I'm really short on time but I want to explain a few things first so um, some of you were questioning if, if that makes sense to put the vintage area in the studios because my studios are like a bit more modern, if so 80s inspired and 90s inspired in that kind of direction um, and, and you were actually doubting for a good reason if that does fit or not. Um, and let me get this straight, I, I had this idea in mind for quite a while and uh, the overall idea about this very park uh, in the park um, will be like an abandoned film studio area which is now used as a set for like advertorials and advertising um, commercial spots and stuff. I know this kind of well from our film studios in Cologne which are TV studios and um, there you have a lot of nice locations, you have even party locations, you have kind of um, different locations for filming and uh, you also have like a fairground kind of thing um, for smaller uh, kind of fairs and you know all these kind of things where you can even have like public galleries or so on so there are a whole lot of stuff going on um, and this whole area is offered so to say to companies to use them which makes the studios also money because you can rent all the areas and, and you can go in and uh, kind of use all the different buildings they have um, which is the idea about this idea so it has been a vintage studio area right so that's the that's the idea so like the, the studios from the 20s 30s 40s in this kind of direction um, and then by the time uh, even having had some some movies in the 50s 60s maybe and then it got abandoned um, and we have this area as kind of a fairground for an expo that's the basic idea that we have kind of like an, a bigger expo in the 60s and um, this has been used in this area and so after this big expo they kind of save this area for like um, yeah as I said for companies that want to do um, stuff like uh, filming and so on and whilst they did this they figured okay it can be also super cool be integrated into a theme park and that's what I'm doing then I'm, I'm integrating this area in the theme park but what will stay is for example and that's what you see right now which I'm doing right now um, the pavilion of the expo of the 60s so I have been really wanting to do that for such a long time. I have been had tests with different coasters and so on. So it's not a new idea to use coasters as structures, but um, or the coaster track as a structure. But there wasn't that great coaster to use because like all coasters have like um, different elements that you could use. So you can use kind of the, the wooden coasters to, to make fencing and you can use the one rail coaster or the monorail coaster to make kind of pillars and, and iron structures kind of nicely though you can can really make like nice iron structures out of it um, but it's all a bit crappy to handle like it's really really hard to handle and with the bobsled coaster when I first saw this I was immediately like oh yeah that's that's gonna be it that's gonna be it I'm gonna do something crazy with it um, I was a bit I was a bit bummed that you can't really rotate the pipe more than 90 uh, 84 85 degrees actually which is very realistic but I, I hope that with the option to disable coaster limits or track limits I was able to completely turn it around which unfortunately didn't happen and didn't work but uh, still you can do some crazy shapes with it um, and in this episode we are going to basically lay out the um, yeah the overall uh, kind of composition of this pavilion and in the next episode which will be out tomorrow immediately so it will be kind of a short two episode series only for this pavilion before we then go on some rides and some layouts of this area 
Um, but yeah, it, it, it will definitely be a hard time doing this and in the next episode is also the episode where I need to talk more about this because I'm going to redo a few things. But I guess, okay, that could be a nice episode for you guys to see what I am able to do with all coaster types and so on and, and with this coaster type especially as kind of a structure. And I'm going to talk a bit more about the architecture of this pavilion in the next episode. But for now, this should be it. Um, I uh, hope you enjoy this video and you will enjoy the uh, rest of this video. And and also, if you do so, give this video a like. Also, let me know in the comments below what you think of the idea about this vintage area, like the story I just told. And also, let me know how you like the color scheme and the overall idea about this pavilion. Um, and yeah, everything else I can say is have a great day. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do so for more Planet Coaster awesomeness and of course also some more creative games in the future, which I will announce shortly. Um, but yeah, guys. Um, Enjoy your day and see you in the next episode. Now enjoy the rest of the video and bye bye.